Warning, this episode may contain content that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. It's okay to be gay. We are different in many ways. Doesn't matter if you're a boy, girl, or somewhere in between. We all are part of one big family. Welcome okay to Queer to Kid Stuff. I'm Lindsay, and this is my best friend, Teddy. T stands for trans or transgender. Ooh, that's a cool new word. What I'm trying to provide is a solution to the source of the problem, which is talking to very young kids about gender and about sexuality and normalizing these ideas. This week, we're reading one of my all-time favorites, When Aiden Became a Brother. When Aiden was born, everyone thought he was a girl. His parents gave him a pretty name, his room looked like a girl's room, and he wore clothes that other girls liked wearing. Mom hugged him tight. When you were born, we didn't know you were going to be our son. We made some mistakes, but you helped us fix them. And you taught us how important it is to love someone for exactly who they are. Kids and kink can coexist. I'm not saying that kink isn't appropriate for kids. I'm saying they can and should coexist with each other. The American Academy of Pediatrics has found that children have a solid understanding of their gender identity by the age of four. This is when children are developing their sense of self. They're observing the world around them, absorbing that information and internalizing it. Now, most parents want their children to become kind, empathetic, self-confident adults, and exposure to diversity is an important part of that social and emotional development. I was born biologically female. I began transitioning and taking hormones when I was 18 years old. Growing up, I couldn't pinpoint what my issues were, and then I realized that it might be a gender issue. When I turned 18, I did go to Planned Parenthood. I just stated that I had gender dysphoria, and they gave me testosterone a week later. Before I went on hormone therapy, I wasn't required to see any therapist or any sort of a doctor at all. So about a year and a half after I was on hormones, I decided to see a therapist about getting approval for top surgery. I walked in on one appointment for half an hour, and then she emailed my insurance for approval, just like that. Even at this point, when I was passing as a man, I still had these doubts in the back of my mind that said, what if you're wrong? What if you made a mistake? In the end, I decided not to do the surgery. At that point that I decided to detransition and live my life as a woman again. Even as an adult, it took me a long time to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. Kids especially need to see a therapist before making any sort of permanent medical decisions like going on hormone blockers and surgeries especially. I mean, they don't even know what they want for dinner the next day, let alone what gender they are. The biggest mistake that I made was that I did not get the right amount of therapy or medical advice needed. These days, if you tell a parent if their child thinks that they might be transgender or has gender dysphoria, to wait and really consider it, maybe seek other therapy, you're just seen as transphobic now because you're not accepting people. At some point you described dysphoria as like a mental illness. Mm -hmm. So do you, would you consider yourself then mentally ill because you are For transgender? Sure. Yeah. For sure. So you, do you think there are transgender people who aren't mentally ill? Well, I think that there are a lot of people who call themselves trans that are not. Yeah. So um, so those people, perhaps they're not, or maybe they have some other things going on. But gender dysphoria itself, I believe, is a mental illness. And I have to say I believe because it technically was taken out of the DSM-5 for political purposes. You know, people felt like it was sort of like making trans people look mentally like discriminatory ill. discriminatory or something? Yeah, they're like, it makes them look mentally ill or crazy. But my whole thing is like, I don't think people who have mental illness are bad people. Allowing us to just talk honestly about the fact that it is a mental disorder and allows people to understand us. Because yeah. if to the average person and to me, if I were to step outside of it and be like, okay, so you transitioned to a girl, but you don't think that has anything to do with your brain or like anything, anything chemically went wrong, then what is it? After surgery, my grades in school plummeted. Everything that I went through did nothing to address my underlying mental health issues that I had. And my doctors with their theories on gender thought that all my problems would go away as soon as I was surgically transformed into something that vaguely resembled a boy. Their theories were wrong. The drugs and surgeries changed my body, but they did not and could not change the basic reality that I am and forever will be a female. When my specialists first told my parents that they could have a dead daughter or a live transgender son, I wasn't suicidal. I was a happy child who struggled because she was different. However, 
at 16 after my surgery, I did become suicidal. I'm doing better now. But my parents almost got the dead daughter promised to them by my doctors. My doctors had almost created the very nightmare they said they were trying to avoid. Layla Jane was born a girl. She Layla Jane experienced a host of medical issues in her youth. Her mother, who is bipolar, expressed to these uh, physicians and therapists that her daughter might be bipolar, but she actually never received any diagnosis or treatment for that. The family went to one physician who, after less than a two-hour appointment, green-lighted the hormone therapy, and in a similarly or even shorter period of time, a plastic surgeon signed off after one visit on removing her breasts. Like most young women who go down this path of identifying transgenderism as the solution to their problems, reinforced by irresponsible medical care providers, it's likely that if physicians had properly diagnosed all of the issues present in Layla Jane as a child, she would never have gone down this path. My name is Prisha Mosley. I was a 15-year-old girl when the trans community found me. Already diagnosed with multiple mental illnesses, including anorexia, a body dysmorphic disorder, and borderline personality disorder, a trauma disorder, I was easy to manipulate and convince that I had been born in the wrong body. I was told that this was the reason for all of my mental and emotional distress. You finally have expressed your true inner self or whatever, the thing that you wanted to do so badly ever since you were like 13, 14 years old. You did this thing to alleviate this gender dysphoria, you know, that wasn't there before, but you made it into a problem and now your body image issues are worse. That's not supposed to happen. What do we do now? My parents were immediately concerned. They felt like they needed to get outside help from medical professionals, but this proved to be a mistake. It immediately set our entire family down a path of ideologically motivated deceit and coercion. The gender specialist I was taken to, taken to see, told my parents that I needed to be put on puberty blocking drugs right away. They asked my parents a simple question. Would you rather have a dead daughter or a living transgender son? The choice was enough for my parents to let their guard down. And in retrospect, I can't blame them. This was the moment that we all became victims of so-called gender affirming care. I was fast-tracked onto puberty blockers and then testosterone. The resulting menopausal-like hot flashes made focusing on school impossible. I still get joint pains and weird pops in my back, but they were far worse when I was on the blockers. A month later, when I was 13, I had my first testosterone injection. It's caused permanent changes to my body. My voice will forever be deeper, my jawline sharper, my nose longer, my bone structure permanently masculinized, my Adam's apple more prominent, my fertility unknown. I look in the mirror sometimes and I feel like a monster. I had a double mastectomy at 15. They tested my amputated breast for cancer. And I was cancer free, of course. I was perfectly healthy. There was nothing wrong with my still developing body or my breasts other than that as an insecure teenage girl, I felt awkward about it. After my breasts were taken away from me, the tissue was incinerated. Before I was able to legally drive, I had, part, I had a huge part of my future womanhood taken from me. I will never be able to breastfeed. I struggle to look at myself in the mirror at times. I, 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 still, I still struggle to this day with sexual dysfunction. And I have massive scars across my chest. And the skin grafts that they use, that they took of my nipples, are weeping fluid today. And they were grafted into a more masculine positioning, they said. Like, I can't imagine living with that. Like, I can't imagine what it would be like to regret a bottom surgery or, you know, to, to be infertile. Because when you were a, a little child, like 12, your, you know, parents were manipulated into putting you, like, blocking your puberty. The more time I spent online, the more it felt like real life. And the more real it felt, which eventually led to me just fully transitioning. My favorite websites were YouTube and Tumblr. I really love this it's such a huge amount of content that I consumed at that time. 
I mean, I watched a lot of trans people. I watched a lot of, you know, gender transformation videos and saw these people really just like go from female to male visually. Like they looked like men. And I was like, whoa, I didn't even know that it was possible for a woman to pass as a man that well. It's really dark when you think about it because the people who are consuming this are children, like 13, 14, 15 years old. And it's so easy for them to literally be groomed. I just started looking into all of it. I was like, oh, so there's gender queer, gender fluid, there's agender, there's like, you can be a demi girl, which is when you're like 90% girl, 10% not girl. Like there's just an infinite amount of ways that you can interpret and express your own gender identity.